Veshem Yahweh Ha'av, Ve Yahweh Ha'ben, Ve Yahweh Ruach HaKodesh. Hallelu Adonai Yah Yahweh Hashelush HaKadosh Baruchu. Yehi Shalom Ve Brachot Yeshua HaMashiach Lacha. Amen Ve Amen. Shem Ha'av, we have been, we rule our Kakodesh, Yahweh Rachmim, Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Rafa. Hallelujah. This is my interlinear copy of the Quran with the transliteration into the Roman script that we read as English speakers, along with the original Arabic text. Now, I know that says the original Arabic text, but I'm wondering what original Arabic text is it? Because Daniel Brubaker has made multiple videos and has a really popular YouTube channel called Variant Quran and Hatun Tosh on her YouTube channel, DCCI Ministries, I believe it's called. She ha She constantly, on multiple occasions, has walked around on Speaker's Corner showing Muslims and Christians alike, different Qurans, 40 different Arabic Qurans that not a single one is in complete agreement with another. So in light of all this evidence that Hatun Tosh, Daniel Brubaker, and even Sheikh Yasser Qadi has given us that um, there's holes in the standard narrative, there's multiple different copies of the Arabic Quran out there, and Daniel Brubaker is showing early variants in the earliest manuscripts of the Quran. So I want to know what original Arabic text this is. Be nice. I, I don't know if somebody has this kind of Quran and knows where it would be written in this. It'd be cool. Let it. Let me know in the comment section, please. English translation by Marmaduke Pickthall. A well-respected, world-renowned uh, scholar named Joseph Lombard is actually why I uh, picked up this translation because in his words, it's very, very accurate to a word-for-word -word translation. I'm wondering if I have to film myself flipping to the open page so that people don't accuse me of having a fake Quran. But if it is a fake Quran, it's not my fault. It's the, peop it's the Muslims who wrote it and Amazon who sold it to me. Adonai Yahweh Yeshua, protect me from error. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, here goes nothing. This is Surah, family of Imran, chapter number 3, verse, or Ayah, chapter 3. It reads like this in Marmaduke translation. He hath revealed unto thee, in parentheses, Muhammad, uh, if it's in parentheses, it probably means it wasn't there. Uh, the scripture with truth confirming that which was revealed, again, it's in parentheses, we're going to find out that it wasn't there. Before it, that's not a good translation, I'll explain why in a second. Even as he revealed, he being, in verse number two, it says, Allah, there is no God save him. He hath revealed, Allah hath revealed to Muhammad the scripture of truth, confirming that which was revealed before it, even as he revealed the Torah and the gospel. Now, I want you, I want to show you guys the transliteration here. Nazala al-Lakal Kitaba. That Kitaba means scripture it's constantly used in the quran for the bible bil khaki khak means uh truth in uh arabic 
Musa Dikal Lima Baina Yadehi. I'm gonna show you guys a clip of a this Arabic phrase right here. This one, exactly like this. I took it from an Islamic website from uh the Arabic of the Quran and then I put it in Google Translate and then it turns out this doesn't mean before revealed before it. It means in your hands. Now, this uh, Arabic word right here, Yadehi, I unfortunately can't read this script, but I can read the Roman script. which And this Yadehi, Yad, that's a Hebrew word meaning um, hand. And we know that Arabic and Aramaic and Hebrew, these are all Semitic languages. So that's why, that's another reason I know that that means hand. And I'm going to show the uh, translation in Google Translate that this means um, in between his hands. In context, in between his hands would mean that they have access to it. And if they had access to it, that means that the Bible that they had back then, it's even, it affirms the Bible even more because if we study 6th, 7th, and 8th century manuscripts of the Bible, the ones that they would have had access to, we find out that we have the exact same context in almost the same word for word writings that we have today the Peshitta proves this the Peshitta it's an it's an Aramaic translation of the New Testament the context is still exactly the same it's still exactly the same all right this is uh women chapter four and we're in verse number 163. Lo, we inspire thee as we inspired Noah, a biblical prophet, and the prophets after him. We inspired Abraham, the father of our faith, and Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, the one that said Yahweh, God is his father in the Old Testament, and the tribes, Jesus, and Job, more biblical figures, the king of the biblical figures right here, Jonah and Aaron, more biblical prophets, and Solomon, as we imparted unto David the Psalms. So this is an, a book of the Bible being referenced in this. So they, they list a whole bunch of biblical prophets that they inspired. So um, Surah 3 says, God revealed the Torah in the gospel, which means that it, it seems to me that would mean that those are his words. It says here, um, God made a whole bunch of revelations to Noah, to Abraham, to Jacob, to Israel, and to Jesus. I, that seems like it would mean that everything that's revealed to him is also Allah's words. We're going to find out in a second that there's nowhere in the Quran that says that the Bible was corrupted because it constantly says that the Bible is Allah's words and nobody can change Allah's words. Let's look at the Arabic uh, translation of Yesus. This is going to be irrelevant, but I figured it's worth noting. Isa is not Arabic for Jesus. The Arabic name for Jesus would translate into Yesua. I'll put a picture um, of it on the screen in just a second, and then I'll show another translation from Google Translate. Thank God for Google Translate, man.
the language that this name right here, Esau, comes from, it comes from uh, an Aramaic dialect, a, Syri a Syriac. And it comes from the name Isha. I believe that's how you'd say it in a, a specific, but for the most part, I think it's Yeshu or Yesho. For the most part, it's translated as Yeshu or Yeshua. Most Arabic translations of the, uh, like the Syriac infancy gospel and the Arabic infancy gospel these actually translate Jesus' name as Yeshua. Okay, so we're in chapter 5. We're just going to take a quick look at chapter 41 to let you guys know that it's speaking to Muhammad. Now, uh, you wouldn't know that if it didn't say, Oh, messenger, but it doesn't call Muhammad by name in this. In the very next verse, it, if you look in the uh, transliteration, this is the only way I could have told, Muhammad's name doesn't show up anywhere in there. It, it does insert his name, well, how they come unto thee. Well, it doesn't even do that in the English. I'm sorry, my mistake. Uh, so we're going to look at 43. Again, this is chapter 5. How come they unto thee for judgment? It's asking, why are they coming to you, prophet of Islam, for judgment? When they have the Torah, it kind of sounds like it's implying that if we have the Torah, we don't need any revelation from Muhammad. This is God speaking. Why are they coming to you when they have the Torah? Therein Allah hath delivered judgment for them. Allah delivered judgment in the Torah. This kind of sounds like Allah is calling the Torah his word. And if the Quran is consistent, that they can't change the Torah because the Torah is Allah's word. Yet even they that turn away, such folk are not believers. If you turn away from the Torah, you're not a believer. Lo, we did reveal the Torah. We revealed the Torah. Again, that sounds like it's calling the Torah Allah's words. And um, I haven't found anything in the Quran that says that the Torah was corrupted, nor the gospel. But there's verses like this that say the Torah and the gospel are authoritative. Let's continue. Wherein is guidance and a light? By which the prophets who surrendered unto Allah judged the Jews and the rabbis and the priests judged by such of Allah's scriptures. Allah's scriptures. I don't understand how that can be understood as anything else as Allah's words. The words that the Quran constantly says can't be changed. As they were bidden to observe and thereunto they witnesses. So fear not mankind but fear me. Fear me, fear the judgment that I put in the Torah. That sounds a lot like those are his words. And barter not my revelations for a little gain. Whoso judgeth not by which Allah hath revealed. Again, that sounds like the Torah and the gospel is his words. And such are disbelievers. If you don't believe in the Torah and the gospel that are Banyaya Dehi in their hands, you don't believe in Allah's words. Chapter number 6, verse number 115. There it is right there. Chapter Cattle, verse number 15. Perfected is the word of thy Lord in truth and justice. There is not that can change his words. The words that he revealed in the Torah and the gospel, the words that he told Jews that they don't need Muhammad to judge by, the, the words, he is the hearer and the knower. Nobody can change these words. Those who followed the messenger, uh, uh, my mistake, this is uh, chapter number seven, the heights, Verse number 157, those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, whom they find described in the Torah and the gospel. So uh, I guess according to Muslims and not the Quran that they're supposed to believe in, they can't find Muhammad in the Torah because he's not there. So I want to do a quick breakdown of some logic here. 
This is saying that the Prophet Muhammad is prophesied in our scriptures. This is putting the burden of proof on itself. So since there's nothing in the Quran that explicitly says that the Bible was changed and we're supposed to be able to find the prophet that was prophesied in the Torah and the gospel, this lays a huge burden of proof. They're going to try to flip it back onto us. We have to prove that Muhammad's not in there. That doesn't make any sense. We don't have to. We've examined every single argument you guys have brought forth from from Isaiah 42 to John 5, him being the Holy Spirit, him being Yahweh, the mighty warrior, the God of Israel in Psalm, in uh, Isaiah 42, him being the, the, the beloved of Solomon's wife in Song of Sons chapter 5. But then that same word Mahmud is said to be profaned in Ezekiel. Kind of weird logic here. Let's continue in the verse. Described in the Torah and the Gospel, which we can't find and they can't find either for some reason, even though the, the Quran is saying the Bible's never been changed, so he should be there if he was there then. He will enjoin them that which is right and forbid them that which is wrong. He will make lawful for them all good things and prohibit them only the foul. He will relieve them of their burden and the fetters to wear. Then those who believe in him and honor him and help him and follow the light which is sent down, again saying the light which is sent down, it said that they sent down a light in Torah and the gospel, they being the we that Allah refers to himself as. Try to wrap your head around that if your God has so unified in one. And follow the light which is sent down, they are successful. I want to know, they are successful. I know this can be interpreted as those who follow the Torah and the gospel that this book constantly affirms are going to be successful. Okay, now we're in chapter 10 of the Quran. Jonah is the name of this chapter. We're in verse number 64. There's good tidings in the life of the word in the hereafter. There is no changing the words of Allah. That is the supreme truth. There's no changing the words of Allah. There's no changing. I guess this would count the Quran, but this also counts the, the Torah and the gospel. The Torah and the gospel do fall into this category according to the Quran. And unless you can show me a verse in the Quran that says that the Bible was took that the Bible was changed and omitted, the Bible was destroyed, the Bible was ripped up, the Bible the Torah or the gospel. If you can show me one verse in the Quran that says the Torah was ripped up, the Torah had words taken out of it, people, I, I, I want to hear an explicit statement saying that. Same chapter, Jonah, Jonah chapter 10, verse number 94. If thou, Muhammad, are in doubt concerning, if the prophet of Islam is in doubt concerning that which we reveal unto thee, they being Allah... Okay, so, if Muhammad are in doubt concerning that which we reveal unto thee, then question those who read the scripture that was before thee. Verily the truth from thy Lord cometh unto thee, so be not thou the waverers. So, if the prophet of Islam is in doubt, he has to ask us, the people of the book. Notice it says, Unala kitaba. Kitaba. That's a, that's a word used constantly for the Bible. You guys probably would have noticed it already um, if I would have took time to break it down in the other verses that we were studying. So go to those who read the scripture. That's the Christians and the Jews if you're in doubt. Muhammad has to respect the authority of the Bible of his day, which is the same Bible we have today. All right, this is chapter number 34, verse number 31. Again, chapter 34, Saba. Verse Ayah 31. And those who disbelieve say, We believe not this Quran, nor that which was before it. But oh, if thou could see the wrongdoers are brought up 
before their Lord, how they cast the blame on one another. Now, uh, or nor what was before it. So they're saying, basically, if you don't believe in the Quran or what was before it, kind of sounds like if you don't believe in the Quran, you don't believe in what was before it. And if you don't believe in what was before it, you don't believe in the Quran. Uh, if I'm wrong, explain to me how I'm wrong in the comment section. Or before it, that's not a good translation either because we look over here and there's the same exact phrase, Banya yadehi. Banya yadehi. I'm going to show the translation of this again and pr that proves that this means between your hands, as in you had access to it. You could hold it in your hands. Now we are in uh, the chapter called The Angels, chapter 35, verse number 31. As for that which we inspire in the of the scripture, it is the truth confirming that which was revealed before it. It mistranslated again by saying, Baina yadehi, the, the truth that is in their hands. Lo, Allah is the observer and the seer of his slaves. We gave them the, strip, the scripture, the inheritance unto them. Some of the elected are bondmen, but of them are some who wrong themselves and who are lukewarm of them that outstrip through the deeds of Allah's leave. They is that, that is the great favor. Gardens of Eden enter them wearing amulets of gold. So then we gave the scripture as inheritance unto those who elected our bondmen. The scripture, kitab al -Azi. Again, there's that word kitab, which is usually used for the Bible. And then the gardens of Eden was promised for them. Gardens of Eden is the same heaven that was promised to us in the Bible as well. So it sounds like people who believe in the Bible that was bainya yadehi in our hands are going to heaven. Okay, this is chapter 61, The Ranks. We are in verse number 6. Reads, it, it reads this way. And when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, lo, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming that which was revealed before me. Uh, it, it's a slightly different variation of Baina Yadehi. It says Baina Yadaya what is in my hands, right here, what is in my hands. Baina yadaya. So, what is revealed before me, or <laughs> what is in my hands, literally, in the Torah, and bringing good tidings of a messenger who cometh after me, whose name is the praised one, the one that we can't find in the book that he's talking about, Yet when he hath come unto them with clear proofs, they say, this is mere magic. It kind of sounds like this is in reference to all the Jewish sources that called Jesus a sorcerer. I'm not sure if you want to appeal to those. I got one more um, chapter to show. This is chapter 16 called The Bee. And we're we're going to, oh, I'm sorry, I think this is chapter 15. 15 is right. I'm sorry. Chapter 15, verse 91. Those who break the Quran into parts. Uh, this isn't... This... Uh, I know it sounds bad enough already, but when you translate it literally, it gets worse. This word right here, Idian, Idian, I believe is how you'd say it. They, they have a really weird way of pronouncing that Z, and it's hard, hard to copy the phonetics. I apologize. I'm not an Arabic speaker. But this word right here um, means into shreds. I'm going to prove it with a different Quran. This is a Yusuf Ali Quran. A lot of people insist that this is a very, 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 very accurate translation. So I'm going to turn to Surah 15, verse 91. 
so also as much as have made the Quran into shreds. That's what I, that's pretty bold and explicit language of a destruction that was done to the same holy book that it's written in. Let me read that one more time. Yusuf Ali. So also on such as have made the Quran into shreds. Again, this is the Yusuf Ali translation. A quick recap, just in case I made a mistake while editing this, and I'm lazy, so I'm not going to put all the work in the world in doing this right. Quran chapter 15, verse 91 of the Yusuf Ali translation. So also have made the Quran into shreds. The ha Abdil Halim translation. Verse 91, and abuse the Quran. Let's look at the scholarly note right there, that little B. And then we look at that. There are two interpre interpretations of the word Adina given by Razi. One is parts or shreds. The other is lies or invention. Abuse covers both. So the way that this Quran translated it, it can mean that both lies and inventions and the Quran was made into shreds. So it had lies and inventions added to it while it was being made into shreds. So I'm, I'm not making this up. This is what your Quran says. This is what the Arabic says. This is what Arabic scholars who translated this into English say. And if there's, for whatever reason, if your God is too weak to translate properly his Arabic word into English or Spanish or whatever other language, I don't want to worship that God. That is a weak, limited God. So I just really hope that this blesses some Muslims to understand that their holy book is internally inconsistent. I hope that Christians will understand and not be discouraged in their faith whenever they, they bring some kind of stupid tomfoolery nonsense to us. I hope the peace and blessings of Christ be upon all of you. God bless you all. Pray unceasingly in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Spirit by the grace of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. B'shem ha'av, we'hal we ruach ha'kodesh. B'shem Yeshua ha'mashiach. Shalom aleichem. Amen.